Recently, a drone operator from the 3rd Assault Brigade in the Kharkov direction spotted a target that at first glance appeared to be a Russian TOS-1 thermobaric missile launcher. However, as Forbes writes, after it was destroyed by a UAV strike, it turned out that it was not a TOS-1, but something much stranger and rarer. According to the 3rd Assault, this was a new type of missile vehicle combining the hull of an old T-72B tank from the 1970s and an equally old RBU-6000 launcher from sea-based anti-submarine missiles, a Frankenstein of a Russian tractor and the sea-based missile launcher. As Forbes noted, the latest improvised Frankenstein machine is further evidence of a growing problem for Russians. The Russian army entered the war in Ukraine with about 50 TOS 1s and lost half of them. The shortage of TOS 1s explains why Russia is apparently importing North Korean missile vehicles and also why it is bolting naval missile launchers onto abandoned T-72Bs thousands of which are sitting in warehouses across Russia, the publication writes. As the publication notes, these missile launchers, although originally intended to sink submarines, are still not a bad weapon for conducting ground combat operations despite their inaccuracy. The problem, however, is the firing range. It is half that of the TOS-1, and the closer the launcher is to the front line, the greater the risk it is exposed to from the enemy. The fact that the Ukrainians disabled half of the Russian TOS-1s underscores this danger. It is no coincidence that since the ground-based RBU-6000s first appeared in Ukraine about a year ago, the Russians have been steadily increasing their armament, installing them first on thinly protected MT-LB tractors and trucks, and then on old T-80 tank hulls, and finally on at least one T-72B Forbes writes, and while the T-72B's hull is more heavily protected than, say, a Ural truck, Forbes notes that an RBU-6000 is an RBU-6000, no matter what engineers attach to it. That's 12 fragile missiles, each of which is almost certain to burn up if hit by explosives, artillery shrapnel, or even a few machine gun shells. The Russians have created another Frankenstein's monster for use on the front in Ukraine. This time, they crossed the carriage of the 82mm 2B9 Vasilek automatic mortar with the 73mm 2A28 Grom gun from the MPB-1. And this spring, the Russians began using turtle tanks on the front lines, tanks crudely covered with sheet metal and even wood to protect against Ukrainian drones. This technology has shown limited effectiveness, but experts consider it an unsuccessful rather than a successful experiment. The Wagner Group of Russia isn't just active in Ukraine. It also has a presence in many other countries, including Syria or Mali. Recently, Troops of Russia's Wagner Group were seen in Venezuela during protests following disputed election results. The sighting has raised concerns about Russian involvement in the country's internal affairs. According to Militarni media outlet, Wagner was spotted among Venezuelan police officers during protests against President Maduro. It is noted that released footage shows a man in a camouflage suit with a Wagner Group insignia standing among the police officers. Venezuela and Russia have maintained close military and economic ties for years. Russia is one of the largest creditors of the Venezuelan government. The presence of Wagner Group mercenaries in Venezuela is seen as a sign of Russia's continued support for Maduro's government. Venezuela's Electoral Council released the results shortly after midnight on July 29, indicating that Maduro won with 51.2% of the vote, while opposition leader Edmundo González received 44.2%. This contrasted with exit polls and documentation the opposition had collected from around 40% of voting centers that seemed to show González winning with 70% of the vote. The opposition immediately called the results into question, claiming that they had not been verified. International observers likewise cast doubt on the results' validity. Protests against this lack of transparency began the day after the election and have continued. 
While such mobilization against the government has become a feature of Chavista Venezuela, the current protests are notable for the range of people coming out onto the streets.